Our Healthy Homes, ourhealthyhomes.com, 651-775-9194. We talk about the four pillars of a healthy home. We're talking about the physical property itself. We talk about the interior of the home and the ecosystem going on in there. Mm -hmm. We talk about your body, of course, and uh, all the things that you put on your body and in your body. And we talk about your emotional and spiritual well-being. And if all those things are not in place, the roof comes tumbling down. So we like to say it's young living or assisted living. You can make your home (laughs) A healthy home, and it all starts with you, That's and it right. begins right now with Sheila Hittner, the lovely and talented. Mm-hmm. We have Dr. Alexandria Valdeviezo. Did I say that right now this time? <laughs> <or> <laughs> Valdeviezo. Good job. Dr. Alexandria wow. Valdeviezo. <laughs> right. On the program today, we'll get to uh, Alex in the next segment of the show, but Sheila's got some really exciting news for you right now. I do. You don't even know about it. Oh, That's how exciting it, out, it is. Spit it out. <laughs> So I was on a call today, and just like you said, young living or assisted living, the the world of us young living people, right, the, the health and wellness and the natural product users and the uh, just loving loving everything that we can plant-based and natural and, and uh, using those things to support our body and whatnot. Well, my ask today is that if you know of anybody um, that is in those uh, areas of the hurricanes and whatnot, we love what Young Living does to support us and what we're going through. And you, if you have somebody in those areas that is a Young Living customer or brand partner, uh, let them know or reach out to me, go to the website and hit the contact button or 651-775-9194 that we have a team of Young Living Diamonds that have put together uh, resources for our Young Living people. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, our thieves cleaning products, um, the cough drops, like all of the things that, that they're used to having right. to be able to literally bring to them. Mm-hmm. So we have a team that's taking the donations. That's actually a team of people that are going there to deliver them to our Young Living customers and brand partners. Now, the beautiful piece, there's always a little <laughs> way to get around some things, right? If you're not a Young Living customer or a brand partner, Let's get you to become one, and then we can get you some resources. Okay. So they're bringing, you know, with what they know and what they have and all the general, you know, goldfish and, like, all of that kind of stuff, which, you know, a lot of us aren't used to eating. And so, uh, again, Young Living is just a great company that supports what um, we believe in, what we put, what you just said, in our body and on our body. And we want to continue doing that even though we we're going through a crisis. Funny you mentioned that because I was just thinking about it. I think I dreamt about it last night, actually, because they're having uh, s- some places still don't have water. Yeah. I mean, they have, you think, well, all the flooding is water all right, around. Right. I can now have water. Well, it's water you can't drink. Right. It's not potable water. So you you can boil it. Yeah. But you know something? It's still going to be a little funky. Yeah. It's still not going to be quite. Mm-hmm. You know, so but a couple of drops of lemon in there, a yep. couple of drops of thieves in there, mix her all up. It's going to be just fine. It's going to taste great. It's going to be uh you know, pure and without uh, bacteria in it, and you can drink it all down just like I can drink uh, thieves right out of the bottle if I want to. Right, which I've done. Yeah, which you've <laughs> shown. Um, so, so reach out to me, and I will get you connected to who you need to get connected to to support um, our our family of of natural believers. Right. Um, okay. So the other thing I wanted to mention today um, is detoxing. It is a word kind of like, uh, you know, toxins. Kind of like and, natural. Yeah. It's okay. natural. Yeah, yeah, right. I've heard detox so much uh, that <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> right, mean anything. <laughs> right. Right. So, but does your body need a, di- mm-hmm. a detox, right? We always talk about uh, changing the oil in our cars mm-hmm. and doing that kind of thing. And and I used that analogy with somebody the other day, and she's like, oh, my gosh, that makes so much sense you to me You take a now. shower every day. Well, right? at least I do. I don't, <laughs> you, don't, you take a shower, right? You wash the outside. Right. How about cleaning up right. the inside? How about cleaning the inside? Yep. So, um, you know, sometimes 
I know, I know there's people out there that wake up after a full eight hours of sleep, right? And they still don't feel refreshed, right? Um, and it, we've all been there at some point, mm-hmm. right? I mm-hmm. mean, you know, I was there 10 years ago with my health journey, and I think you all know that, but you can reach out to me if you want to know my story. Um, and so uh, what what that does is when we have a sluggish body because mm-hmm. we're not cleaning out the oil and things like that. Um, you know, you get fatigue, you get brain fog, your muscles, your joints, your allergies, gas, slow metabolism. Like there's so many things that contribute to to um, the body just needing to be cleansed, right? And so you can go online and you can Google detox and you are going to get a zillion types of detoxes. You're going to go down the rabbit hole yeah. of yeah. what in the world and then you're back to square one with you're so confused that you don't even know where they you're do going. Nothing. So then you do nothing, <laughs> right. right? Because you're so confused. So I'm asking that you give a detox a try. And you give me a call so that I can walk you through that. Um, And a lot of people think um, it's like, oh, I have to, you know, mix this gross stuff together and it's going to taste like cement. And, you know, it it, it isn't like that anymore because there's so many herbs that have been put into a supplement to be able to support that. Now, are there things that you, (laughs) yes, there's other things, but a detox will do so much for you Mm -hmm. and so much for your body. Hey, make the challenge, have, have your spouse or significant other do it with you, but it will boost your energy. Um, it will give you the reboot, right? Uh, and you know, I don't know. I just, I just feel like we need to support our health more, and I think people sleep too little. Uh, I think they eat too much bad food. People are under a lot of stress. I mean, this year especially, <laughs> we got the election. We we got all these, you know, store like people are under stress, um, which is going to create um, a disruption in your in your body, mm-hmm. uh, your motivation, and you I mean that will change. And so it isn't difficult. Um, I love to uh, teach and share with you the process that I go through with with detoxing you. Um, And there is a process to it because if you start with something that's too strong, it's really going to, you know, um, probably convince you that you ever don't want you don't well want here's the other thing too one. it's like anything else you know, when you take something out it creates a vacuum creates a void so when you get the bad stuff out there's yeah. a vacuum there and there's a pressure now to replace that with something else so you got to put the good stuff back in too yeah so you can't right. you get it out and then you put the good stuff back in and then it's a cycle then it's going to kind of you know churn through and then you got to flush her out again mm-hmm. uh, just like doing the laundry sometimes it takes more <laughs> than one rinse right you know to get it all out so. Right, exactly. So with with that, um, you know, there's many detoxes, there's many cleanses. At some point, at some point, um, we all need to address the parasite cleansing. Mm. Uh, and so studies have found that we are host to nearly 400 parasitic infections. Mm. Um, and so I eight out of 10 Americans suffer from parasites, and they, they just... They don't even realize it, right? They just contribute it to, I'm getting older, I'm tired, I'm not sleeping, you know, as much. But um, you you can rid yourself of those and have your vibrancy back again. So some sites of, uh, some signs of intestinal parasites, excess belly fat, explained weight gain, slow metabolism, brain fog, constant itching, uh, multiple sinus infections, Uh, That's what I had. Uh, Gas and bloating, low energy levels, interrupted sleep, hormonal changes. Can't blame that on age all the time. Nope. (laughs) Uh, Digestive enzymes, constipation, skin issues, sensitivity to foods. And I'm going to tell you, I don't have it on here because there's more. But sensitivity to smells, I got to say. If it is a pure oil and a pure product, not a fragrance, not something that's chemically made, then we need to talk about, you know, a liver cleanse mm-hmm. if you're really, really sensitive to smells. But that's a whole other topic for another day. But um, I want you to know that you can um, do a detox. I'm here to support you and walk you through it. And you're going to feel better, right? 
Yes, sir, you got some. You're waving your hand. No, no I'm just, oh, uh, okay. we're getting 30 seconds left here to the segment, so okay. I just want to tee up for next okay. segment here. We're coming in the Dr. Alex, Alex V, Dr. Alex V. <laughs> we're going to shorten it, it up. Make it simple on myself. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, more health and wellness journey, and Sheila's going to tell us about her PB Detox, the PB Detox, Pickleball Detox. Oh, when we come I'm back like, I didn't know what we were <laughs> talking about. This is our healthy home. <laughs> OurHealthyHomes.com, 651-775-9194, and we'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. This is Our Healthy Homes, OurHealthyHomes.com, 651-775-9194. Remember, it's young living or assisted living. You can make your home a healthy home, and it all starts with you, and it begins right now with a conversation that we're going to have with Dr. V, and we're talking about, I guess it's chiropractic care, but really... What I find so interesting as I look at the younger uh, people who are younger mm-hmm. and, and uh, doctors that are that are younger in the business, it is not just your old crack and crack a lack and chiropractic no. care anymore. I mean, it's just expanded so much. It's almost it's almost breaching the wall into uh, uh, medical doctors stuff, not diagnosing, but but using a broader approach to health and wellness. Yeah. So w- tell us about your clinic. It's a, it's a national franchise, first of all. Yes. Which in, in any time, so I looked it up today on the website, and I'm looking at that. Jesus, these guys got locations all over the country. Yeah. When I see that, what I see is success because mm-hmm. a business won't grow and flourish like that if it isn't producing results for people. Yes. Otherwise, it's just going to dry up. So why don't you give us the basic framework, if you could, about the practice and what the 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 approach is to uh, to health and wellness. Yeah. So uh, at the Wellness Way, so we say that we are a group of health restoration clinics that Ooh, think and yeah, that think and act <laughs> differently to help solve health challenges that others can't. And really, I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head there, where it is a it's a different approach. It's a different approach to healthcare. It's not to shame anybody out of the medical system or into the medical system. Um, and we really use. The analogy, which I think is a really beautiful component to being here and talking with you all, because we relate it to having a house on fire. Mm. And so the medical system there, their main focus is to put out a fire, put out, you know, a life, Mm -hmm. a life threatening condition. If you're having a stroke, a heart attack, I am not the one. Right. Um, It's we need to save your life first. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we need to rebuild. We need to rebuild from the inside. And that's not the fireman's job. That's putting out the fire. That's a carpenter's job. I'm that carpenter doctor where I want to be able to help you rebuild and help that structure. But I do need you here to be present, whether that means, you know, that means that maybe you needed to take a medication for a while before you came in. But then let's figure out what triggered that. Mm -hmm. Let's figure out the root um, and really see how we can support your body and get it to functionally uh, be as close to 100% as possible for as long as possible so that you aren't relying on those things for your entire life. And let's let's face it that when the original, in my mind, the original thought process of having a medication was a temporary thing, mm-hmm. yeah. not a permanent thing right. to be on mm-hmm. for the rest Take of your life. Take this until until the prescription runs out for the next five weeks and then you're done. <laughs> yeah. Right, and, right. And what we find with so many people is that they don't even recognize that, you know, one of our questions will be like, okay, we see that you're on this medication. Has your doctor consulted with you about a plan after? And they're like, I don't, I, I don't know what you mean. What do, what do you mean? I think I'm just supposed to take it forever. And there's so much more to it than that. And there's mm-hmm. so much more that we can do for, for health than just being reliant on, on different medications. And obviously there's different conditions, so you can't speak one for all, but um, the goal for everybody is to live as long of life mm-hmm. as you can and as happy the quality that you yeah, can as vibrant. well. Yes. So what's cur- what w- this is what I'm hearing and I could just relate to it with housing because that's kind of our yeah, exactly. <laughs> wheelhouse. <clears throat> so if I know that I've got faulty electrical panel that is noted to start on fire, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I can wait until the house is on fire and then put the <laughs> fire out or I can address that panel. Exactly. And what you're talking about is let's address the things that are going to start the house on fire 
before our electrical panel, our, our electrical, frequency, our, our electrical yes. panel, right, right in our own bodies, right, <clears throat> before we are so inflamed mm-hmm. that we can't do anything anymore. Yeah, and I mean the one of the models that that we say in office is you know, we're not going to guess, we're going to test. Mm-hmm. And we do use medical grade labs because we do want to see the values. We do want to make sure that, you know, if we're communicating, which we communicate with a lot of medical doctors to make sure that both of us understand what each other's doing? perception and the perspective that we're taking on a healthcare journey um, for the overall wellness of the patient. Um, and when we're doing that, it's really important that you're also just not looking for a high or low value. Mm-hmm. You want to say, okay, why is that value high or low and attack it from a different perspective, whether that be, you know, you need to support liver function or kidney function. And that's why you're having this di- dysregulation or this high or low number. So when you have a, a, a patient come in then, mm-hmm. do you triage them to say, okay, now we've got a practice that works kind of in, in these 12 areas, let's, I don't know what the number is, maybe it's two, but <laughs> I'll say it's 12 areas. And so now this person comes in, you do your testing. I want to hear about that. I, w- I just want to understand what that's all about. What the testing looks like. What mm-hmm. the testing looks like. And then it's like, okay, I got the test results back. Now it seems like you're. I'm going to group you into this category, if you will. And this is going to be the silo that we work on um, because it seems to be most effective for the parameters that you're presenting. Does that make sense? So when when a new patient comes in, everybody is so different. And we have a broad range of different testing that we can do based off of, you know, a, a really extensive first patient visit. It's a longer visit. It's not an in and out 10 minute thing. We want to know all the ins and outs because ultimately when you're talking about inflammation, you're talking about different triggers that are either a trauma, a toxin, or a thought. And that kind of identifies all the different areas of the body. And so it takes a long time to go through those conversations and to go through those exams. And once we do take that time to go through, which is about 45 minutes to mm-hmm. an hour, so not like multiple days. Um, but then we we make our, our best recommendations as to what that testing may consist of. And those tests can vary. But once we get those results back, we paint a really big picture as to, you know, like I kind of said, these are all the different, we're looking at these values, but at the same time, we want to see why these values are off. And from there, the range of care could be totally different from person to person. So um, from there, it could be lifestyle change. It could be supplementation. Um, But we are different than a functional medicine or a natural style doctor as well. So in the way that we're approaching it, because at least typically when you're seeing a functional medicine doctor or a natural doctor, Mm -hmm. Um, which is just, again, you kind of said that word natural in, yeah. in the last segment. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, you know, no one knows how yeah. to interpret it. Right. Um, but typically they're also just looking at that value. So let's say, for example, if your cholesterol is high, they want to give you an herb to bring your cholesterol down. Mm-hmm. Well, is that cholesterol high because your body needs it for hormones? Are you going through a healing process? Because cholesterol isn't a bad word. You need mm-hmm. cholesterol. No, you do. Mm-hmm. You need it. And um, medically, typically the range is very low that they want you to be in medically before, um, you know, they give you either a statin or anything like that. Um, that statin's going to bring it down really low and too low typically for what we would say we want you to function for, especially female hormones. I mean, women have hormones all over the place, but men do too. And we want to support that. We want to support the body healing. So everybody's journey is really different. Well, and those statins, they, there's studies out there that, that statins create type 2 di- diabetes, but that's another story. Oh, well, yeah. So, <laughs> Right. And we could go there all day long, too. So what are what are some of the tests that you do? I'm interested in knowing what the specific tests are that you do. Yeah. So let's say there is a uh, a male that comes in, gent that comes in and he just says, I want I just want to see where I'm at. Mm -hmm. We would have what we call a male panel. It's going to be kind of like a fishnet that we throw out and it's going to tell us your your kind of more typical blood work, your CBC, your CMP. So the things that are telling us about your kidney function, your liver function, your white blood cells, red blood cells. Um, but we're also going to check in on more of like your diving, diving in deeper onto your cholesterol and not just seeing is your cholesterol high, but men typically have a higher rate of different heart conditions going on. So then we look at a more thorough lipid panel, which will tell you is the cholesterol actually bad cholesterol or is it a good cholesterol and this is a blood test these are yep blood blood tests tests. yep 
So the first ones you mentioned, is that something that, you know, you'd go to your general practice doctor and they would. You'd have those. to, yeah, get somebody to order it. And yeah. it would have to be for a specific reason because they're not going to just order tests for yeah. it because the insurance won't pay for it. So, and that's where it really comes into. So we, we are a cash-based practice mm -hmm. where um, we don't let insurance dictate our rates. Right. And that's where we really have a lot of freedom because you could ask your doctor to run a lot of these labs that we are. But they have no idea if insurance is going to cover them. And right. at the end, you might be left with a $1,300 bill, $5,000 bill for all these different testing that we've already made an encompassing panel for you. Right. Um, and we have the same for a woman that's more geared towards female and female hormones. We have food allergy tests, gut tests, um, different hormone tests as well. So, I mean, it, it really, there's no limit on the testing that we can do truly. And you, you... Um you have the phlebotomist there, so you take the blood right there, right? You don't have to send somebody to a lab to have a blood test. Yeah, so we can do either drawn. one because in uh, in our office, we do have a phlebotomist in the office, so if someone can make it in. Um, but we also see, uh, see and consult with patients over the phone where if we need to ship mm. out some testing, we can absolutely do that, and we will find a lab near them as well. The only exception would be New York State. Mm. All wow. right, when we come back... I want to just dive into food a little bit, and food allergies, in particular in inflation or in, in inflammation, inflammation <laughs> causing, not inflammation. In, I get inflation on the brain, infl inflammation causing food allergies when we inflation come back. Inflation is causing inflammation. That's right. <laughs> but when, exactly. When we come back. Welcome back. Thanks for hanging out. This is Our Healthy Homes. Our Healthy Homes, the four pillars of a healthy home. We're in the studio talking with uh, Dr. V, uh, and we're talking about preventative really and diagnosing and getting your kind of restoring uh, yourself back to your your primal uh, health and uh, I had a question about food food allergies Sheila mentioned it just as we we're going out to break and it just made me think about some of the ingredients in in our oh like in our I looked on a label of uh, of some uh, ranch dressing ranch dressing that Sheila was uh, mowing on before we came and looking for an ingredient that, you know, emulsifiers that make things smooth. Because I, I was reading this week on one of them that actually is made from algae. You would think that that's a plant-based thing. What could be wrong with that? But it actually causes inflammation to the point where it's one of the most commonly used ingredients in the American diet. But it actually, it's used in labs to test for anti-inflammation uh, medicines because it causes so much inflammation. And here we're eating it. You know, it's in everything. It's in our pudding, and it's in everything because it makes stuff nice and smooth and creamy. Which equals processed foods. Which equals processed foods, uh, generally anything in a bottle. Right. <clears throat> box, so yep. it's like, or in a box. So how do you test for st things like that? I mean, d when you're doing your food allergy mm -hmm. testing, because a lot of people are may not even know it, but they're having a reaction, yeah. not necessarily to corn bake, just I'm picking something out of the air. <laughs> but maybe to some of the ingredients in the corn bake. Uh, yeah. So how does that work? Yeah, so we have a food allergy-based test. That's a blood test. Mm -hmm. So um, it's nice because it's it's not fasting. So you could really do it at any time um, that you wanted to come in. But really what we're looking for on that food allergy test is two different types um, of markers. So we're looking for what's called an IgE and an IgG response. Now, an IgE is going to be, when you're thinking more of that anaphylactic reaction, mm -hmm. something that's instant, you eat mm. a peanut and your throat swells up. Yeah. Typically, people kind of know that they have those, but right. we do actually find a lot of people are surprised. Um, and also, when people have an immune system that's so suppressed, sometimes they're not even responding to things like that. Mm. Um, so that's a really good way for us to test those those possibilities where maybe it just happens that there are, you know, we want to support the immune system. We want to make sure that you're able to fight things, um, but it'll help them know, you know, if your immune system is, is building at some point down the line, you could have a reaction to shrimp or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, the other reaction though is the IgG. That's more of a delayed response. So these responses can happen anywhere from a couple hours after eating a food all the way up to a month after eating a food. Oh, really? Yeah. So, and sometimes you can't really correlate, you know, maybe you get a headache in a couple of days. You have no, you, you don't remember right. that, you right. that thing. Um, it could be, you know, any sort of gut related issues, anxiety, skin itchiness. Uh, there's a lot of different stuff that kind of happens and can, and really, I mean, inflammation does so much to your body. You mm -hmm. really can't pinpoint one thing. 
But what you can do with that test is you can see maybe you thought you were eating a really healthy diet, mm -hmm. but you have an IgG response to kale, to Brussels sprouts, to apples. So people that are trying to drink apple cider vinegar to, you know, uh, uh, be thinking that it's healthy for them and helping them break down their foods and decrease acid reflux, stuff like that, things that you see, that could be causing them a lot of inflammation. Mm. Well, and um, I know that if you if you have fibromyalgia, you should stay away from high foods that are foods that are high in copper, right? And so you you just Google foods high in copper, and it's not necessarily a bad food, like right. like you mentioned yeah. kale, uh, well, I don't know a certain squash. I mean, like whatever's on there, right? So you you could do a really good thing for your body just to to take a look at that if you know you have fibromyalgia mm -hmm. and just do a uh, experiment for a month and look at that list and just see and see how much better you feel after that. So it's it's not like the good food is good for everybody. Right. Right. Yeah. It, and and I mean, the good thing, too, is the IgG responses. Um, so those delayed reactions, those are typically not forever. So those can definitely change. So just because, let's say, mm. you know, you have a kale salad every day or there's things like black and white pepper, vanilla, cinnamon, things that you wouldn't even think of as being uh, allergies, you don't have to avoid them necessarily forever. You just have to let that gut heal. Mm. You have to let your immune system become supported, kind of, you know, help itself again. And then hopefully those, sometimes they're forever. We don't know. Yeah. But, but you know, um, I mean, but you can retest. Yeah. And you, and you can come out of that. I mean, I left certain foods alone, you know, for, for quite a while. And, you know, I'm, I'm fine now. I can build back in certain, you know, I like good cheeses, but, you know, so there's some dairy that I choose to bring back in. But, you know, during that healing time of, you know, my God, I mean, I couldn't have a raw vegetable for a year. I couldn't mm -hmm. digest it. I, you know, I mean, I was at the rock bottom of, you know, feeling crappy. And, and so, um, and then back to the parasites, you know, they were taking all the nutrients first before I got yeah, them. Yeah. And so I was ending up with nothing, even though I was eating good food. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think that, that people really don't realize that you can really come back and you can have some of those other foods. Mm -hmm. It's just, you, you got to take the time to repair the damage that we've done over our lifetime and our lifestyles and our sad American diet and all of the things. Um, and, and the, the thing too, is that you, you got to have support and you have to have, you know, somebody that's going to guide you and walk mm -hmm. you through it and, you know, be your support person. Cause it's, it would be difficult to do. I would have never done it on my own. Okay, so I want to know how, how do you isolate this because it it sounds too simple to me. If if uh, <laughs> I'll give you an example, I got a bag of white cheddar che Cheetos. Mm -hmm. I did not buy them. And <laughs> I have a bag of yellow che cheddar Cheetos. I did not buy them. When I eat the white cheddar Cheetos, I find that the next morning I have an upset stomach, but I don't have the same reaction to the yellow cheddar Cheetos. So I just know myself now I'm never going to buy white cheddar Cheetos again because it upsets my stomach. You also don't like them. And I don't like them as much, so maybe it's an emotional thing. I don't know. So Food is emotional. But so when you do that blood test, my point mm -hmm. is, is how do you isolate that? Because when someone says, okay, what's in the white cheddar Cheetos? I read the label on the back. It looks the same as the label on the yellow cheddar one. Yeah, so the the differences between your your two cheetos i'm not entirely i'm not entirely <laughs> sure that i can find your answer at the moment no i would if you came in i would probably ask you to bring both um just to see if the ingredients truly are the same there's a lot of hidden hidden words yep. like the instant natural flavors mm -hmm. that encompasses a lot of things right. there can actually be could be different at both there could be cod there can be fish in natural flavor there can be um yeast in natural flavorings and so that would be one thing that I would look at as far as that component. So when someone comes in and you're saying, okay, I want a food allergy thing. So, oh, just do a blood test, send it off to the food allergy guy, mm -hmm. and he's going to run the thing. When it, Does it come back then with a list of things that are, you're saying, hey, don't eat this stuff? And does it also yeah. correspondingly say, your body likes these over here, by the way? 
So your body only knows inflammatory and not inflammatory. Okay. So it doesn't have a range. Okay. So when you are looking at a group of foods, so I shouldn't say it's all foods. It's 110 of the most common foods okay. um, that they're really testing for. So it's not everything, but um, your body knows it either is having an inflammatory response or it's not. And it's foods, not ingredients. Correct. Right. So it's re- it's it's foods, not the ingredients in the foods. Well... We, how would you so, know? I well, mean, if you're eating a packaged food, there's a, that isn't food. I mean, okay, that's just, you, okay, you know what like I mean? You just said it right there. <laughs> you just said it. Yeah. It's not food, right? Right. It's just a mix of ingredients. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So we shouldn't be eating it anyway be because it it's not food. Okay, so food. let me ask you this because now I'm getting curious. What about meats? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I I'm a beef guy. Mm-hmm. You know, and I we will eat pork occasionally and and it's I like it, but I but I don't I don't like it as much or don't eat as much of it as I do beef. And I don't know why it is. It's just because I like it. Mm-hmm. But is there a difference like if you if you would you have a reaction to one meat and not the other meat? Absolutely. Really? Mhm. So I mean, we do see people with, you know, certain Uh, responses to crab versus shrimp versus chicken versus egg versus um, the egg yolk from the egg white versus beef. Um, So there there are different reactions because each food has a unique protein Mm. and your body is responding to that unique protein. So it's kind of, okay, you just said protein and reacting to that. So that goes into, you know, our, our dog thing that we had, right? We had one dog that was allergic to chicken and of course I nearly killed him because I was making him chicken thinking that was good. She was doing you're, good. You're just trying to right, do what you thought right, was good. Yeah. Right. Which then found out that, you know, broke out, you know, you know, hives and Hair everything. Falling out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, poor poor mm-hmm. Stony Boy. But um so so the 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 point of it is is that it's it's kind of like the people that are allergic to shrimp, just FYI, the chicken is the high is the protein that that dogs are allergic to the most. So if a dog's going to have an allergic reagic, reaction to, to a, a protein, it's going to most likely be chicken. But I'm relating <laughs> that back to us, right? You, you can have reactions to a good food. Right. That's a food. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That's a real food. Yes. Like shellfish. This yes. is our healthy homes, <laughs> our healthy homes.com. 651 775 9194. That's a Get Healthy Hotline. Give Sheila a ring a ling a ling and she'll be happy to have a chat with you and get you pointed in the right direction. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. This is our healthy homes, our healthy homes.com. The four pillars of a healthy home. It's young living or assisted living. You can make your home a healthy home and it all starts with you. And the fourth segment begins right now with Dr. V, and we are talking about. Really, just uh, getting yourself in good shape and and uh, in a healthy state. If you're if you're hurting in any way, if you've hurt your leg or you hurt your knee, or and you need a back adjustment, certainly that's the place to go. Uh, but there's a lot more to health and wellness than the snap, crackle, and pop. And I'm just gonna say that I don't care where you are at in in your world right now. I think everybody could take advantage of a a start a screen you know a, a starting point right because you know it's we wait until we're so sick and we're so bad off that it costs you more your feet you know it costs you more money because it's a longer haul to to take and go through the process of healing it and we always say you're going to spend your money now or later on your health. You know which one is it, right? Mm-hmm. So, so let's do it now. It's it's the same. Cheaper. Th- yep, it's cheaper. It's the same thing, you know. Um, that I always tell people, I wouldn't do anything different in my journey. I would do things in a different order, um, and so I would tell everybody to go to to go get a comb beam scan because you don't know what's you know underlying in your mouth and and all the things. So I would say go get some some sort of assessment right to see where you're at now because change and and knowing what you need to do now is going to be easier on you and you're probably going to have more success than if you you know wait until you're till you're bad off <laughs> um with dr v i know i um, had some conversations with her before and i love that the office gets together weekly mm-hmm. you 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 guys get together weekly and you see what's happening and what the most 
um, people that come into your clinic or the most that's happening, you know, out in the field as far as uh, with people. And you have been seeing a lot of strokes, heart attacks, and, and just heart issues recently, right? Yeah. So really we've seen a lot of um, people coming in with a lot of hypertension, a lot of oh. high blood pressure, a lot of um, uh, irregular heartbeats that they're not sure where they're ca- they're coming from. It's never been an issue before. And when they go to the medical doctor, which regarding your heart, good first step. Right. You need to rule it out, but they're labeled as having anxiety. Mm-hmm. All their labs are normal, mm-hmm. um, quote unquote normal. So um, that that's what we really took an, an extra step um, in our in our recent extra conversations and trainings and approaches. And and it's a nationwide collective group that gets together. Oh. So it's not just the the four docs that we have in the office. Um, it's a nationwide group that gets together to make sure that we're all on the same page. We have updated research. We have research articles printed to review. Um, so it really is as in-depth as we can to. So you to see the then best. nationally these trending issues and and our, and our meeting as a collective group and saying, how can we get in front of this mm-hmm. and help people? Because this is what we're seeing coming through the clinic. And so we need to have an answer for some of these problems. If they go to their medical professional, their medical doctor, and they say, you know, your tests are fine. There's nothing wrong with you. It's all in your head. Okay, so you mentioned in the first segment that, you know, you're, it's going to be food. Inflammation comes from, from food. It can come from many things, including thoughts. Mm-hmm. So tell me about that, and how do you approach that then? Because obviously you're not a, a psychology clinic. Yeah. How do you approach that then? Yeah, so I mean stress and just the word itself, there's so many different meetings, meanings, but when we're talking about thoughts, we're thinking about that mental and emotional stress, which can sometimes make us sicker than anything else. Yes, because, yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it does take a real effect on on your adrenal glands and your hormones, and those are going to have such, and when I say hormones, that's a really broad it term. Is. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so it's not just, you know, your your estrogens or your testosterone. There are so many different hormones. Um, and... But your stress has a direct correlation there. It has a direct cor- correlation with your blood sugars. Um, and, and it's just so much of, of what we see. And you need to take it seriously. Um, and if people aren't addressing those stressful thoughts, whether they're mental or emotional, whether that's talking to somebody, um, talking it out, but you need to be able to reduce that. Um, and sometimes, you know, people talk about the gut brain connection. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there is a link for why that's being triggered. And again, that's that why component um, that we really try to to do through the different, you know, in that case, it would be a gut test where we see, uh, is there an over undergrowth of good or bad bacteria? Um, are there parasites mm-hmm. present, which mm-hmm. are, it's very common that people very don't common. know that they have Eight them. out of 10. <laughs> and sometimes those can honestly come up as negative and pop up later mm-hmm. because you, you may not get it on the first try. Um, but with that, in mind, which that's not always the cause for everybody, but you have to take all of that seriously because that's not going to be seen on a cardio workup or an EKG mm-hmm. or, and so it may look normal. And it's not going to show up in a blood test probably. Either. Absolutely. So now you've got this person in the studio who is obviously, or in the, in the, in the clinic, who obviously is experiencing some discomfort and some problems. Mm-hmm. And, and you have your blood test back and you go, mm, geez, you know, the, the medical doctor said, nothing wrong with her and our tests are showing the same thing so then what's what do you do in that case yeah in that case again we would go based off of the testing but from there i mean we're going to be making lifestyle changes Mm -hmm. um you know maybe we do recommend a a therapist for different sorts of you know like you said i'm not a psychiatrist i don't have a background in psychiatry so first of all it is referring out where appropriate because i can't take some of those stressors away Mm -hmm. um but what we can help with is we talked about food allergies uh, that's something that at least we can take that stressor off of your mm-hmm. plate. Um, we can try to help with healthy habits as far as, you know, what does sleep look like for you? Sleep is crucial. And, you know, if you're not, if you're waking up in the middle of the night, your sleep cycle is off. You're not getting the appropriate uh, nutrients to your brain in that way that it needs in order to rebuild and be ready for the next day. How do you look at exercise then as part of all of that whole package? And how do you address that? So, I mean, exercise is one of those tricky subjects because you can overwork out. Mm -hmm. You can overwork your body, Um, especially women. Women should be doing different exercises at each phase of their cycle throughout the month. Oh, interesting. Um, Because at at certain times, I mean, if you think about it, if you are in that portion of 
of your cycle and you're having blood loss, you're going to be tired. You shouldn't be working out and running six miles a day during that time. Is there a, a, at any point in time when you're, it's, there's too much pickleball involved? <laughs> well, not in <laughs> Sheila's case. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, so I looked over that, and it's good <laughs> all the time. Okay. All the time. Yes, okay. I, I right. love it. Right. Um, it. It's interesting that um, when we were talking um, off off air about the potassium mm-hmm. shortage mm-hmm. that we're having. Uh, Isn't it, that just salt? But, but, but before we go there, okay. um, I think we have time. We we have a grandson that's that's in a working with a company that's exploring and uh, new um, modalities. Okay, okay, whatever. And so anyway, they're working on a patch. P- potassium patch to put on the calf mm. because pota- Who knew that potassium was like the bigger picture issue yeah. than it really is? So tell us why are yeah. we potassium short or what's the deal with yeah, potassium? Yeah, so we do see that there is a lot, there's a huge link at least for what we've, uh, you know, what we've reviewed as far as like what research goes from the Nas- National Institute of Health. Um, so, I mean, these are medical journals. These are medical research that's happening. And uh, when people have high blood pressure or hypertension, they're often told, oh, well, you have too much salt. Mm-hmm. You need to be on a, a low salt or no yes. salt diet. Almost every function in your body needs salt. So what the other issue is after they did research is they found out, well, in order for those those pathways that contain salt, it's called a sodium potassium pump. You need enough potassium in order for those things to function properly. Yes. So what we're actually seeing is it's not that people are eating too much salt is that they're not having enough potassium. So. On average, um, I believe that the study said that people on average get between 600 to 1,000 milligrams of potassium per day, but the recommended daily value um, is 4,700 milligrams of potassium. So is the different salts then have different potassium levels? I mean, is it Himalayan salt versus, you know, whatever? So salt and potassium are two different things. Okay. So there are like potassium-rich foods, like the the highest potassium food that you're going to be looking at is like uh, beet the banana beet beet greens okay bananas banana is a good one too mm-hmm. uh but beet greens so not the beet itself but the actual greens on oh. top of the stock oh, portion really? yeah so Bitter. um <laughs> yeah right yep. so you you got to down it but that's you need a lot of it um i believe that a serving of it has 1300 milligrams so if you can if if you can get past the taste i mean it, nutritionally it's it's great for you and at least then you don't have to worry about the supplement quite as much. But right. if so you want a supplement, you can. Yeah, that was where I was going with the supplements is, you know, we we have the supplements to support what it is that we need, but you can't take a supplement for absolutely everything. Y- you want <laughs> right. to get it nutritionally. Right. And that's always the number one is you don't want to have to come in and, and rely on a supplement for the rest of your life other than, than realistically – it's not that much different than taking a medication for the rest of your right. life. Of course, there's not necessarily all the side effects associated with it. Right. Um, it might even be more expensive to live on supplements for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, so we really, that's a huge focus of what we do is teaching people how to take control, how to do this for themselves. Um, because the ultimately. the thing of it is, is if you have to, then I have to eat the rest of my life. If I have to eat this food, <laughs> then I have to eat the rest of my yeah, life. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do I really have to eat the rest of my life? Yeah. I yeah, know, you do. <laughs> And not Cheetos. And not Cheetos. And not, not the Cheetos. white ones, not, not the, the yellow white ones. ones. You can have the yellow ones. Right, the yellow right. ones are good with ice cream. <laughs> oh, so so the potassium, um, what by having low potassium, what what does yeah. that do to the body? Yeah, so you're gonna be seeing things like high blood pressure, you're gonna be seeing heart flutters or heart palpitations, oh. uh, weakness, nerve pain, fatigue, digestive issues. Whole so host I of mean things. there's a whole host of things, which is a, a long, long list, but the it's the wellness there. way in Woodbury. The wellness mm-hmm. way in Woodbury. Six five one three three zero ninety four fifty three. That number will get you connected, right? Yes. Six five one three three zero ninety four fifty three. Thank we'll you. See you next week. But when he calls me sugar, I love that man with all my might. Sugar in the morning, sugar in the afternoon.
Nobody calls me that name, it does things to me. I tell him, honey, you can call me sugar.